We love horror movies from the 70s and 80s And we watch them for two days straight And then we go write a book Now we're looking back at every title One at a time in this podcast that we put out monthly Once we've had an episode for every movie It's time to meet up for another shock marathon (laughs) <laughs> Hello. Hello and welcome to episode two of the Shock Marathon podcast, where today we will be discussing a fascinating film called, is it The Zero Boys or Zero Boys, Tom? Tom is uh, showing me the, the box cover right now, and it's The Zero Boys, which he got for, uh, four, you, you, did you pay four ninety nine for that or even less? It's hard to remember. Probably <laughs> less. Um, anyway, we're here with Tom Scalzo, who just spoke, and Charlie Roxburgh is about to speak. Hey. I got my copy on one of our road trips, Farley. I was in checking Miss- in uh, Shock July, and I actually kind of mentioned it briefly. It, we got it in uh, Mississippi. I know. Isn't that great? Those days are gone. The days of um, sidewalk sales from video stores are, are long gone, I'd say. Right. right. Ed's video, Mississippi. Yeah, it's a good time. <laughs> That's good note-taking uh, from the trip. Good work. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right, folks. So Zero Boys is, I believe, from 1986. Is that right, Tom? Correct. And it, um, perhaps it was um, promoted as horror a little more than it actually was horror because um, it's it's almost an action movie. I don't, maybe it doesn't even know what it is. It's a little bit action, a little bit horror, and a whole lot of wonderful. So let's mm-hmm. get let's get into it right here. Uh, it starts off with an outrageously over-the-top and, and deliberately misleading, might I say, introduction, um, where we're in an Old West town, and there's just all-out uh, warfare going on between these two groups of, of young men. Uh, one of them hangs up a picture of Sylvester Stallone as Rambo on the wall and says to it, eat your heart out, Sly, before uh, going out on a mission to shoot some people. And this is, you know, good camera work, lots of, uh, you know, people getting shot. No, and when they're shot, they, di- they look like they die. One guy gets shot and falls about 10 feet and just lays there dead. <laughs> and, <laughs> and eventually the camera pulls back to reveal that the whole thing, Tom, what has it been? It's a weekend warrior paintball extravaganza. That's right. And, Charlie, how, what do you feel about the misleading way that was presented on screen? I feel that only the screenwriter liked it. <laughs> it's that kind of thing where when he was writing, he thought it was great, and then everybody watches it, and you groan because you think of the hundred ways that what we just saw wouldn't have been possible because all those people were sitting so close. Everyone died in a way that they were actually dying just for the benefit of the camera. Yep. And it, it's just annoying. It's like dream within a dream, um, or it's... Actually, we were filming a movie, and you think, you know, we see those in tons of films. Yeah, I, I would say the, like, I was trying to justify it, and the only thing I could think of is, do they g- get into it full blast for the benefit of the girls who are watching? Is that part of the deal? Uh, probably not, but that's the only explanation I could get, Tom. That's, that's the only possible explanation, but I think Charlie's right. This, this kind of thing happens all the time, where it's just, they don't, whoever's making it doesn't think of how this would actually play out to the audience. They just think it's a cool idea to mm-hmm. trick people. And it pretty much never, never is never is appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. Shame, shame, shame. Anyway, so that happens. Oh, and also, uh, it's funny how I, I assume both teams think that they are, uh, good. And yet the team that loses dresses as Nazis, which is funny to me. Like it, <laughs> yeah, it's later revealed that the guy, the head Nazi guy, is Jewish. Uh, so I don't understand what they're trying to do with that. Yeah, I, I think again that's just for the benefit of the the audi- the film audience, Charlie. Yeah, there's a, and there's a lot of weird political incorrectness sort of in this movie, yes. and also foreignness. Someone, you know, the director is Greek, and I don't know how long he lived in America. Uh, not for that long. He didn't grow up here, and I feel like he didn't understand. Uh, American culture well. Yeah, Troll 2-esque, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, after that um, misleading and not all that entertaining opening scene, um, 
the girlfriend of the losing team is handed over to <laughs> the winning team, the leader of the winning team. And these characters are so um, not um, described in any way that I don't know one. I know there's the leader of the Zero Boys, and then there's everybody else, but that's about all I can say to distinguish between them. Charlie, you agree? Right, yeah. The leader, Steve, is really you know the whining, annoying guy. You just really know him the most because he just talks the most. And uh, the other guys are, they're all, no, no one has anything that they're sort of, uh, that differentiates them or that they're striving towards. You're right, they're just a blank, a blank group of generic uh, paintball dudes. Which in some ways I applaud the movie for because they, they, they're like, eh, who cares? People, like, you, put your own personalities upon each one of these characters and, you know, just enjoy yourself. Right. So um, Jamie quickly accepts her role as the prize of the Zero Boys, um, and and then they drive around town <laughs> for about three <laughs> three minutes in their truck. With some like bombastic yeah. music. The music <laughs> the music in the first ten minutes is so overpowering. At first, it's it's trying to trick us into thinking we're watching an action movie, and then it's trying to trick us into thinking that these people like each other and are having fun. So anyway, then immediately they just go out on a picnic, and uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> the Zero Boys are a little bit um, reluctant to to warm up to Jamie. That's a minor subplot where they're all like looking at her from a distance and being like, "Go talk to her." Like, I don't want to talk to her, but eventually, I guess Steve talks to her and she explains that she's 19. She was born in Minnesota. She's a college student, about five six. She loves tennis. And and getting intimate on the first date, which is uh, def- definitely probably the most memorable line in the movie, Tom. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And and, and one thing that she mentions that that you didn't mention is she is a psychology major or minor. I can't remember which, but it's just interesting that in this <laughs> era of horror movies, like the mid '80s, there's tons of psychoanalysis in these kind mm-hmm. of. Movies. And it does come up a little bit later in this movie, but it's just like why you have to just put that in there somewhere that somebody understands the the reasons for why everyone's doing what they're doing. It makes me think of Humongous and Sorority House Massacre, I believe, are the two really good examples that I can think of right now. Yeah, and Friday the Thirteenth Part Four has uh, has some of that. Yeah, it's Maybe Part Two. I'm confusing myself, but one of them. Yeah, and and yeah, part 2 when she uh she's able to talk Jason down by pretending she's yeah. um, genius point Tom. That's nice. Right. Um so again the music continues to to shift from fun to scary to action in a way that's um a bit intrusive but it's just part of what the Zero Boys is and you just have to accept it. Um someone notices there's some blood on an evergreen branch and um I don't know. It it struck me as um, unlikely that uh, people that a someone would bleed on an evergreen branch and b that they would notice it. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> yes, and it is funny. I had to watch it like three times just to get to the the thinking at of this point here and how they decided that something was wrong. <laughs> Jamie says, "I saw a woman in the woods." They check it out. They see blood. Then she says. Let's go up to the house and ask them about it. And that kicks off the whole movie. That yeah. I don't know how she would expect that the house would know about this girl necessarily or that, that they were tied together or that they need to break in and move in like shortly <laughs> thereafter as if it's normal. And I think the, the key word is just vague. They, they, never, they never worried about things that were vague. They just went with it. The whole movie is vague. Yeah. yeah. Why, what are they even doing like you said they're going on a picnic, and they do sort of, but there was also hints that they might be going on like a weekend retreat somewhere, but they never really say, and they don't have any bags or anything. And but they brought a birthday cake. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. Where did this cake come from? What are they preparing for? What are they doing? And Jamie, as far as Jamie knew, she was watching her boyfriend at the weekend warriors, and then going home. But now she just lives with the zero boys, and she's fine with it. Well, she wants to see what makes him tick. <laughs> <laughs> they give her the out to like to not be the prize, and she's like, "Nah, it's all right. I'll be your prize." How, how about when Steve whines and said it was Casey's idea? <laughs> it's the most whiny thing I, I've seen in any film. 
Uh, a lot of whining. Yes, I agree. So, um, uh, the movie wastes no time. You know, we don't know these characters. Let's just get into it. Um, you know, they're trying to find that girl. Then they, they see the cabin and the, you know, they're entitled brats who, upon seeing a cabin, decide it's their right to go into it and to completely make themselves at home and just have a heck of a good time. And um, before long, the birthday cake comes out. And in my notes, Tom, right here, birthday cake, where did it come from? They packed for this? What was the original plan? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to step on your toes there, but it's it's just unbelievable. It doesn't make any sense. Charlie? Quick fun thing. I'm pretty sure the birthday cake is for Rip, the character <laughs> called Rip. And Jamie is, is kind of teasing the Zero Boys, and she says, all you guys are going to end up yuppies one day. <laughs> which, which may, that goes to show you he knows nothing about America he, she also says that they get season D's in college that they like they're barely able to stay in school his name is Rip and they're like <laughs> dirt by paintball kids yeah, yeah I, we haven't even addressed the, the, the importance of paintball in their lives maybe we'll save that for the overall analysis because I mean that's that's a key moment right there too but sure. so um Oh, then there's some hijinks. There's a guy in the tub pretending that he's dead and shouting out that he's horny. And lots of other, like, uh, innuendo-style dialogue going back and forth between the characters. And, um, again, it just smells of um, of being too smart. Uh, the, the, the writer being smarter than, than he or she should be, I would say, Tom. Yeah, um... It, it definitely feels overdone, and there's also a couple of random references to uh, Jason, which I caught, and I, I just normally don't like that, that, that these people are aware that horror movies exist, you know, it, it just doesn't usually feel right, and this is like a world that's not like that in some way, but it, it's supposed to be also like that. It's just weird. Yeah, same with the Sylvester Stallone up on the wall. I mean, right. if, if you're going to state what your movie's all about, um, no better way, if you're the Zero Boys, than to put have a character put Stallone on the, on the door and, and to speak to him. The, at least, so at least they're not, you know, they're not tricking you. From minute one, they're like, this is what we are, and <laughs> you've got to accept this. <laughs> <laughs> so then a girl's getting intimate with her boyfriend um, and she notices someone's eye watching through a hole in the ceiling, which he totally writes off. It's probably just one of the Zero Boys playing a game. And um, and that's ridiculous. Um, but prior to that, I think I, I, I forgot to tell the history of the name, the Zero Boys, which they, they call themselves all the time. Originally, they were the Legion of Doom. But uh, after about a year of being in the basement, uh, in the standings, uh, in the <laughs> in the paintball league, um, everyone just started calling them the Zero Boys, and the name kind of stuck. And the, it, it's one of the few moments where they actually do give a little backstory, and it's wonderful for being so um, innocuous, maybe, Charlie. Yeah, I mean, what they want you to feel for Steve, that, that he used to stink at paintball and then he achieved something. <laughs> but he's such, a, he's such an annoying character that it doesn't work. It's funny, but it it's, doesn't actually work. Oh, and so then Jamie identifies a human bone, uh, adding to her diversity. This girl can do just about anything. She's got the psychological background, but also the um, whatever the study of bones is. She says, uh, have you taken anatomy yet? Like... <laughs> Something like that, yeah. I have. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then the couple that was in the bed with the, the eye watching them through the ceiling, they don't investigate. They're like, were you watching us through the ceiling or anything? they just like, yeah, probably one of the Zero Boys. Let's just go back to the living room and argue with the classic line, you screw like you go to the movies with your eyes open. Which, mm. is that a phrase? <laughs> uh, well, it's just as confusing as you um, when you pee, you look like a male model. Was that in this movie? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I that's that. in this one. I, I don't. I have no idea what that means. I, ha, I have no honest idea what that means. If that's good or bad, is being a male model bad? I guess. <laughs> if you're, if you're a paint baller. So then um, they're kind of bored with the cabin, and someone states that we should go somewhere where there will be people and loud music, which is great. I love that someone stated that. But alas, the truck won't start uh, due to the rain. That I guess that's the vague, um, again, vague, the vague reason why the truck just sort of doesn't start. Lots yeah, of, it, Tom. Sorry. Uh, yeah, they, they 
established that Steve is a master of engines. (laughs) (laughs) And then then later when someone suggests that since the car wasn't working before and now it is, it was probably the storm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that, that that would possibly affect it. It's magic, Charlie. It, it, I think in general, the storm is is given this biblical power. <laughs> <laughs> in this cabin, rain picks up, and it's like we can't drive in the rain in our four by four. Like even when you know, even if it, were, it didn't have its temporary mechanical thing, you get that vibe that it's like the craziest storm ever when it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the the one thing that can stop that that great truck is water. <laughs> so uh, then we we learn that the the zero boys like to use real pistols when they're training for their paintball uh, uh, matches, which is a lot of fun. And um, one of the zero boys shoots a skull several times, just I guess just for the sheer joy of it, right? I think he uh, was yeah. scared or something. <laughs> then um, uh, just a general thought I had at this point was that. Unlike uh, a lot of um, low-budget movies, this is a step above. It's it's very professional. The you know they had um, they had equipment and they knew how to shoot. And a lot of night scenes, you could actually see what was going on, right, Charlie? Yeah, I agree. It, it does it does look uh, technically good, almost like Troll Two again. Where it yeah, feels good, weird. Good point. Um, girls move. Oh, so then the boys go out to see what's going on and then the girls um block the door with a heavy chest that turns out to have a dead woman in it and uh, around this moment it's the first of several moments where they state we're not going to split up moments before they split up have, did you notice that tom yeah they they all, i mean i guess you guess you got to have to get that in there in order to separate people and keep the plot moving but yeah, they they go to great pains to say we're we're a team. We should never split up. Like, just don't mention it, and then someone can wander off, and that's fine. <laughs> yeah, and they have like sort of a military vibe, so it would be more they they should be held to somewhat like higher standard for their tactics than the regular group of teens. Yeah, they yeah. should they should know better. It's it's really and and uh, it's we're gonna get to it, but the. The, the the changes between the tents dealing you know, dealings with um, killers followed by relaxed meetings in the living room or just <laughs> discussions <laughs> Charlie at one point a guy says uh, I'm really hungry can you look in the freezer <laughs> check if there's some steaks or something uh, <laughs> you're in a house that is loaded with secret passages and killers trying to get you and you want to have some steak from their freezer. <laughs> Uh, it, it, I know that that is that is that the exact example of that, and it's one of many, many, many times. And you just want like what's odd about it is like with the splitting. Long time to defrost that too. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 please break. But the, they, why did they have to have the characters state we're not going to break up almost every time before they broke up? That's what bothered me. Yeah, yeah and you know what else they say? Well, uh, it's not a game anymore. That happens like that happens four or, or so times. Yeah. Somebody's playing games with us. You think this is a game? It's not a game. They say it's not a game, and then the same guys will say somebody is playing games with us. <laughs> so while the girls are dealing with the the dead body in the chest, they uh, the the boys um, they find a videotape playing the death of another girl, and one of them writes it off. It, it can't be real, you know. Not to mention, like, what is this house and why is the TV running? Then um, the killer calls them and taunts them. Oh, no, first the Zero Boy unleashes with his uh, semi-automatic weapon a lot of times at the bad guy, but apparently misses him because the bad guy's got a lot of uh, secret exits, it seems. The killer calls them and taunts them on the phone. You know, he's toying with them. There's a character named Trish who's somehow alive after being tossed through a trapdoor in the ceiling. Like, I think she's, is she in like a sleeping bag and thrown down from the ceiling? Right, Tom? It's, it's like, it's like a big plastic wrap, but she's like suspended by her feet. Like she can't, we're, we're shown scenes where she can't breathe for like multiple minutes and she's fine somehow. Yeah, Charlie. And you guys remember when they save her, how important it is to, for her to drink that glass of water? <laughs> yeah. said, Quick, get a glass of water. And everything, you know, they, she's <laughs> coughing it up and taking the sip. And then it actually does cure her. But she needs <laughs> that one sip of water. 
instantly revived. And then th- that's when the the first real quick uh, rebound happens, where they're all relaxed. Um, they're all around the fire. Trish tells the story of her experience, very casual. The, the go into the freezer for steaks, and alas, there's a human head in the freezer, <clears throat> which frightens them. Um, you know, the, if the average person would be frightened, uh, level ten, I would say this was like a four for how they're handling that. Uh, right, Tom? Yeah, when the one girl gets pretty freaked out, but when she tells everybody about it, like they don't even go to confirm it. They're just like, "Oh, that sounds about right." And then <laughs> let's sit back down and think about it. <laughs> so now, luckily, the um, the storm has passed, and the truck is able to work, and they get the truck it starts working magically. <laughs> it's just not. And they're like, "Oh my god, the storm's over. The truck works. I can't explain <laughs> it, but it makes sense." <laughs> they're all fine with that, and um. But poor decision. Um, one of the guys celebrates. Uh, they're just driving away from this house of horrors. And uh, he stands up tall in the truck with his arms outstretched. And uh, he gets an arrow right through the heart. Um, <laughs> which is good, right, Charlie? <laughs> unfortunate. Yeah. Unfortunate for sure. Bummer. So then um, there's some, some tension in the ranks. A girl breaks down and yells at all at the Zero Boy leaders. Um, there's explosion. Oh, there's an explosion in a downed tree, which is part of the trap. So uh, back to the vague topic, the bad guy or bad guys, uh, I guess there's at least two of them, mm-hmm. they're as vague an uh, enemy as I can recall since Final Exam, Charlie, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah I, I honestly still don't understand it. It's like... They were just waiting possibly for someone to come to their house. Then they planned an elaborate trap that involves multiple steps along miles of road. <laughs> and yeah, I, I honestly don't know exactly what, uh, what was onto that. And you tie into that the fact that they're supposed to like videotaping their victims and stuff. And they're just really weird bad guys. Yeah, so uh, somehow multiple people have fallen into the trap of, of walking into this, um, this home in the woods because there's <laughs> been many other victims. It's just <laughs> happening all the time. I guess it's just common uh, practice when you see a house in the woods, just take it over. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so then, uh, with, they get away from, I don't even know why they go away from the truck. Tom, what do you got? I, I just, I, what you just said, I mean, it would be so easy, so easy to have said, hey, the Zero Boys are going camping this weekend to this cabin we heard about, and they go there and that's it. Like, it takes two mm-hmm. seconds and then it makes sense. But they go to great pains to not have it make sense. Yeah, you're right. It would have been much easier, and and yeah, it would have happened faster, and it would have left the viewer with so many fewer um, nagging questions. So, yeah, well, the tr- some after the incident with the the arrow through the chest, the leader tries to stay off the main roads or something. Remember, he's like, "Oh, it's it's a trap. We have okay. to branch off or something." And that's so. when the tree goes down with the explosion. Yeah. So the bad guys knew. They're like, look, at this point, we will shoot an arrow through uh, the chest of one of them, which will cause them to veer off onto the side road where we've rigged up an explosion in a downed tree. Then they'll get out of their truck, and we can stalk them that way. Yes. (laughs) So then they're on foot again and say, we must not break up. And moments later, um, one of the girls, I think it's Jamie, has to tie her shoe or something like that and says, no, no, you go ahead. (laughs) I'll catch up with you. <laughs> and the, and that everyone's cool with that. Um, the rest of the group, I think, finds a dead guy hanging from a tree. And um, and they're all, they're like they were um, around the fire before they checked on the stakes. They've all really calmed down, and they're just kind of hiking at night is more. They're not fleeing a, a, a killer. They're just hiking at night. Right. They're not, it doesn't seem they're in danger. And, um... And then, so is it Jamie, the same girl who tied her shoe? Is she the one who ends up falling in the the hole, Tom? No, I don't. The rest of the girls are kind of hard to remember, but it's one of the others. Okay. It's one of the others. So she falls into a hole, and then they do a great human rope. Charlie, can you describe that? Yeah, I mean it's it's classic teamwork. It's what these guys have lived their lives for, and uh, the fact that she fell into the hole and missed. There, there are 
sharpen sticks like every six inches in this hole. And she managed to fall in like the one square foot somehow where there weren't, you know, they're like poison sticks that are poking up. But anyway, yeah, classic Zero Boys teamwork, human <laughs> rope because they don't have a rope, which one of the characters says. And uh, then they're back to some more night hiking. Yeah, and then the, so they deal with that, and so then one of the bad guys dies in the ends up dying in the hole. I think there's tons of gunfire exchanged, and mo- so many times that this this guy should be dead. Does he finally die? I don't even remember. Tom, do you? Yeah, Trish Trish picks up a Uzi or something, and she shoots him, and he falls in the hole. So she shoots him with like twelve rounds, and he falls in the hole on these poison spikes, and then he gets up again. And then she shoots him again, so I think then he's dead. Okay, and uh, we don't even know how many vague evil killers there are anyway, so um, it's just, it's a, uh, I guess there must be at least three in the, now that I'm thinking about it. But anyway, uh, they after that big uh, thing, they break up again, um, it seems. And I think that the main guy is uh, with Trish, and uh, I think they go down towards the towards the the pond or the river where um one of the the killers was waiting like he knew they would go there right charlie correct yeah i mean there's tons of woods and the zero boys could have walked in any direction and uh this small group of evil guys has it exactly planned out and he he, does he shoot a crossbow from underwater i think tom is that right (laughs) i think so there's a lot of there's a lot of crossbow work in this movie which is nice but I think so. Oh, and then oh, they set up the taser. They set up the taser earlier in the movie. Right. Yeah. And then Jamie is able to tase that guy by tasing the water, and then fun, right. fun special effects there, right, Charlie? Yeah, that was pretty good. Some nice lightning, and they they went well out of their way to set that one up. It was basically like if you are ever near a body of water and a killer is in the vicinity. Use this very powerful taser, which will knock a man out for 10 minutes. <laughs> and um, it doesn't seem, it's not as effective as you would think, because, I mean, he's shaking a lot, but he, he's back up pretty quickly. And um, Annoyed. <laughs> he's annoyed. He's a little more twitchy, too, be, uh, from what happened. But in keeping with what, what this movie's all about, I don't even remember uh, how he died. Did they finally kill him, Tom? Um. I don't. I don't remember either. It's very vague. Charlie, yeah. can one really kill evil? <laughs> All right. I don't so, remember. So there's that great. Ta- no, and the thing is, it's not that we don't remember because we're unprepared. We've all watched this movie multiple times, but uh, that's what it is. It's it's that vague and unforgettable that uh, at, you can't even follow it as it's happening directly in front of you. So mm-hmm. Jamie tases him through the water, and he either dies or he doesn't. I think he does die. And then dawn breaks. <laughs> In the distance, you can see the sky is getting a little lighter. And it, we're, it's revealed to us that there's another man in the tree. I think he has a crossbow, but he has some sort of weapon. And then the movie ends. <laughs> yeah. What do you make of that, Tom? It, I think... You know, for based on the Jason references earlier, I think that that they were really trying to get some sort of a a Jason vibe, you know, where this evil cannot be defeated. But like they didn't know how to do it, so they just have like seven or eight guys that are they just keep replacing each other. And I don't know if they die or not, but it's it's a very vague and confusing evil because you don't know you don't know who these people are, what their powers are, if they just have a lot of crossbows. Charlie. And they're they're an evil that's able to like pay the property tax on a cabin, <laughs> install VCRs, purchase steaks and beer for the fridge, keep a pretty tidy house. <laughs> yeah, very tidy. It felt very much like a condo that you would rent, you know, um in a ski lodge almost. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, and at, at one point one of the one of the, I don't know which one, one of the killers calls Steve on the phone and he says, "You destroyed my best equipment." <laughs> He's very mad about it. <laughs> I side I side with um, the bad guys because the Zero Boys are just entitled jerks who have no right um, entering the, the the property. Maybe the response is a little over the top by the vague bad guys, but ultimately, if I have to choose, I'd choose the bad guys. Yeah. 
Now, uh, let's look at the big picture. Big picture, I guess the key word is vague. And one thing we didn't talk too much about is how vague the um, ba the bad guys are and how not uh, evil looking they are, which I like. Uh, in keeping with, with the final exam bad guy, the few times we see them, they look relatively clean cut middle class guys I'm, I'm pretty sure they i don't they're not like standard hillbillies right tom yeah the only real we don't really get a lot of good looks at them but we the only clue we have is when trish comes back from the dead after being dropped through the ceiling and they said did you get a good look at the guy and she said oh he was horrible you know again it's like what you say if you saw jason without his mask on you know but but it's all just it's all just made up you know there's not actually any details behind it yeah and then you see the guys and the, like they're all like 40 something years old you know a clean cut haircut and just happen to be um on a vengeful uh killing spree right charlie yeah but very poorly thought out one and because it, it, it's so unfocused they wanted to drag it out as long as possible and they seemingly wanted to make jamie Maybe they knew Jamie was the new girl just through body language or something. I don't know. But they wanted to make her look crazy by calling on the phone or making the phone work when Jamie picks it up and then making it be dead when the Zero Boy captain picks it up. Yeah. They're, Why? They're, just to hurt her feelings mildly? There's no rhyme or reason <laughs> to the way they're doing things. They're they're toying with them, um, apparently. They But... I guess they're just so confident of their abilities to lead the Zero Boys exactly where the next trap is that, you know, again, that, that's giving the movie too much credit to think that they, they thought that through, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I Tom, like what? what's... Yeah, go. Well, I think the, the, this whole, through the storm, the power of the house is being controlled by this generator that they could just turn off at any second, but they just don't. <laughs> So, they, so it's more comfortable for them or something. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make any sense. So my overall thoughts are, um, you know, I don't like it when a movie is is doing something purely to mislead the audience. So that they got off on the wrong step in one way. But in another way, um, the fact that it is um, paintball and that, I mean, how I don't think there are any, I don't know of many other movies where the heroes are a bunch of paintballers and, and they're grown up, uh, Charlie. Yeah, I mean, I, I would think kind of in a sentence, it's like wish fulfillment for a bunch of jerks. <laughs> really, we want to see like, you know, Revenge of the Nerds or something, wish fulfillment for the underdogs. Mm -hmm, you're right. It's like their dream situation is they get to use all their, all their jerkiness and all of their um, violent tendencies it actually comes to pass that those are useful character traits and skills, you know, which is not like delightful. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's amazing. God bless that movie. Um, Tom, uh, final thoughts. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing that I took away from it is just this, this seriousness with, which with how, with the paintball, their paintball status in the world, how serious and important that is to them and to the women that love them. <laughs> and what, like outside of this little universe, none of this matters at all. But in the in the moment, you know, when Steve is telling Janie or whatever her name is uh, about, you know, becoming the best at paintball and she's like almost crying and they're going to like hug and be like, it's just, it's so <laughs> ridiculous. But if you don't play it that way, then, then there's nothing. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and, and when they won, you, you guys remember, they were told that they cheated in <laughs> multiple ways by the paintball referee. <laughs> you cheated, but today you're the best. They celebrate and drive away. How can we like these guys? Uh, how about the fact that um, all the missed shots with the paintball when they hit the dirt or the wall, they don't, there's no paint, you know? And, and the only explanation for that is the filmmakers didn't want us to know that it was paintball yet. That's the only reason why we wouldn't see paint, right? And it makes bullet noises. They, they ricochet <laughs> off things. With, that's, a, that's a, such a cheat. Yeah. 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 So it gets off on the wrong foot, and then it just stays pretty um, generic <laughs> from that point forward. The only thing that stands out are the fact that it's it's these paintball guys and... 
in the ending, I, I got to give it to them um, in many ways just because at that point you want the movie to be over and you're thinking to yourself, oh, there's going to be at least 10 minutes of, of resolution, but they maybe the filmmakers realize, look, people have had enough at this point, so <laughs> we're just going to roll credits. Yeah. Dystopian uh, milieu. <laughs> Or they might have. Doesn't really make sense. I'm sorry. <laughs> were they were they thinking of a sequel? I, I guess maybe they thought, "Ooh, let's uh, leave the door open for a sequel, Tom." Yeah, I I I, I was I'm hoping that that never happens. Uh, it, there's too there was too much, you know, going into the realm of torture into this movie, which I don't really like. Uh, like the characters are okay, but when, if you once you add in the torture thing and the vagueness and and. The, the fact that the characters are generally unpleasant. I mean, <laughs> what do you get? What do you have? Not much. What What do you have to hold on to? Except for, I mean, the, the director definitely told the women not to wear bras, and I think that was maybe an Americanism that he didn't understand, too. And that's that's definitely part of it. But it's very odd. It's a very odd movie. Yeah, just very weird, and it does get the the general feeling that the person making it didn't quite know how people behave. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, we don't have as much history uh, on this one, but we can kind of put it in context of uh, it's it's right on the other side of I, I would say maybe 1985 is the the cutoff line between um, classic shock horror movies and when they started to go in a direction in the wrong direction maybe and and so this is I believe 86 and it's a little glossier than I probably would have liked. And the characters are a little bit more um, like bodybuilder '80s type guy, you know, late '80s type guys. So, in it's, but it doesn't go too far over the top, I guess. So, but it, you can see it going in that direction, don't you think, Tom? Yeah, it's got it's got the elements like the psychoanalysis piece and a heavy emphasis on more action, and the, like you said, like it's definitely trying to take advantage of a team take advantage of paintball popularity, take advantage of horror, like whatever you can throw together. But a lot of those things you said, it's a little too clean. It's a little less fun. Yeah. The, the banter between everybody is, um, is not, not, not what it could be. Charlie, any other thoughts about that? The eighties ness of it? Yeah. It's, it's a lot, like you said, a lot more glossy. It feels, it totally feels like it's just a ploy for money. Where sometimes when you watch, uh, one that has a little bit more spirit of someone who really likes horror movies or really likes even in, you know an action movie. This just feels like ploy for money. They, it's the kind of movie where they don't get like a cool local band to do the songs. They get someone who just signed to a label that's that they want to try to promote. And it's like you said, it's it's too glossy and it doesn't have heart. Generic. Generic is a good word, maybe. Yeah, no art, really, too. Yeah, so that that's the. I don't know what um, the filmmaker went on to do or any of the actors, and that's that's fine. Uh, but it def, it definitely stands out. The ending, the you know, the beginning and the ending are, are key right there. And the the line about uh, her willingness to become intimate on the first date are all uh, gonna stick with me. Shock memories. I, I would say, I I don't don't want to steal your ideas. Why don't you go first, Charlie? Any shock memories com- from first viewing to most recent? Well, I, I think uh, when you're watching it in marathon terms, because the quality is pretty good, it's not that painful. Like the sound and picture, uh, picture quality is pretty good. So um, there's that. But other than the fact that it's the paintballers, this movie is really easy to forget. Tom? Yeah, I, I kept hoping once, you know, once they got to the cabin, there would be more of a fun vibe and people would take on more personalities. But they really stay pretty bland. Um, there's like really the girl, the main girl, and her kind of um, attitude of survivalness, and she's kind of she's kind of spunky. You know, she's the only thing that I really remember about. Yeah, you know. yeah. So in, definitely in the context of a of a, a movie watching marathon, it is refreshing <coughs> that you know the sound doesn't hurt your ears and you can see what's on the screen. So it it is nice to get the occasional professionally made movie uh, thrown into the mix. Um, but definitely, so it, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt for 90 minutes, but there's very few highs, you know, and I think we, we covered them. So uh, that that's the zero, boys. We've done it. This is uh, episode two. Charlie, you want to say goodbye? Okay. Later. Thank you for listening. And Tom. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you for listening to the Shock Marathons podcast.